Okay, uh, good morning, uh, everybody at our YouTube channel. And thank you so much, uh, Adele Mortis Conde, for taking your time and giving this uh, presentation uh, to us. First, I will make a brief introduction of uh, Adele Mortis Conde. He received the Professional Electronics Engineering degree from Universidad Simon Bolivar in Caracas, Venezuela, in 1979, and the M.E. and Ph.D. degree from the University of Florida in Gainesville, United States, in 1982 and 1985, respectively. From 1979 to 1980, he served as an instructor in the Electronics Department, department at Universita, Universidad Simón Bolívar. In 1985, he joined the technical staff of Bell, lab laboratories in Reading, uh, United States, when he was engaged in the development of high voltage integrated circuits. In 1987, he returned to the electronics department at Universidad Simon Bolivar, where he was promoted to the full professor in 1995. He was on, on a sabbatical leave at University of Central Florida in Orlando from January to August August 1994, and again from July to December 1998. He also was on a sabbatical leave at, at University of Central Florida, Orlando, from January 1994, and again from July to December 98. He was on a sabbatical leave at Centro de Investigaciones e Estudos Avançados, Sinestad, in Mexico City, from October 2000 to February 2001. He co-authored one textbook, Analysis and Design of MOSFETs, Modeling, Simulation, and Parameter Extraction, in 2012 by Springer. And he also authored over 190 international technical journal and conference articles, including 20 invited review articles. His present research interests include the modeling and parameter extraction of semiconductor devices. Dr. Ortiz Conde is an electron devices strategic lecturer and the chair of the IEEE's CAS electron devices and power electronics de devices, Venezuela, Venezuela chapter. He was editor of IEEE electron devices letter in the area of silicon devices and technology from 2009 to 2018. He was the region, region nine editor of the IEEE electron devices society newsletter from 2000 to 2005. He's a member of the Editorial Advisory Board of various technical journals, including Microelectronics and Reliability, Universidad Ciencia e Tecnologia, and Revista Ingenieria UC. He regularly serves as a review of several international journals and conferences. He was one of the founders of the first IEEE International Caracas Conference on Devices, Circuits and Systems, ICCGCS, in 1995. In order to make it more international, this conference changed its name, its name to International Caribbean Conference on Devices, Circuits and Systems, ICCGCS, yes, in its sixth edition in 2006. Since 2009, Sorry, since 2019, this conference has been sponsored by the IEEE Electron Device Society under the name IEEE International Latin American Electron Device Conference, also known as LAEDC. By the way, this year is going to be in July in Puebla, Mexico. So thank you so much, Adelmo, uh, for taking your time and joining your knowledge to, with us with this Electron Devices Society uh, Distinguished Lecture. Thank you so much, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Adelma. Thank you very much. It is, thank you very much for the nice presentation. It is a pleasure to visit Brazil virtually, and of course, it is better to visit real, but uh, 
you can always travel all the time, no? Yeah. Okay, let's go with my presentation. The outline of my presentation is the following. We will start with the origin, then we will go to the evolution, we will talk about more slow, we will talk about SOI MOSFET, then multi-gate three-dimensional SOI devices, then we will talk about the FinFET, then we will talk about a device that has very many different names. This device is called four sheet, nano sheet, nano beam, nano ribbon, gay all around, multi bridge channel fed, and ribbon fed. This device is replacing the fin fed in the present time. Then we will talk about the recent development, the RF application, and finally we will go to summary. Here is a view graph that describes the evolution of the electronic. It start with 1906 with the vacuum tube. Then 20 years later in 1926, the idea of the MESFET. This was presented in a patent by Lee Linfield. Lee Linfield, two years later in 1928, presented the idea of a MOSFET. Then in 1935, it was presented the idea of the inversion MOSFET. Then year 1947, the fabrication of the first transistor. This was the point contact transistor. It was fabricated by Bardin and Bratain. And a few months later, William Shockley presented the idea of the bipolar transistor, bipolar Johnson transistor in 1948. The three of them, Bardin, Bratain, and Shockley, received the Nobel Prize of Physics in 1956. Then the hybrid integrated circuit. Then the planar integrated circuit. The planar the, the integrated circuit was received also the Nobel Prize in year 2000, I think. Then the CMOS circuit in 1963. The fabrication of the MOSFET in 1960. Then Moore's law in 1965. The fabrication of the first microprocessor by Intel in 1971. That was a 4004. Then the NR scaling rule in 1974. And then about 20 years later, the miniaturization deviated from the NR scaling rule and then new things has to be done. For example, a strain silicon in year 2002, high-k metal gate transistor in 2007, and then the FinFET 3 gate transistor in year 2012, and the gale all around on nanochip in year 2021. Here is an interesting view graph that describes the, the time between invention and commercialization. This view, view graph is taken from a spectrum. Uh, uh, the article is called The Ultimate Transistor Timeline, the Transistor Amazing Evolution from Point Contact to Quantum Tunnel. And that was in December last year. And the, uh, this view graph presents the following. For example, the point contact transistor was invented at this time and was commercialized in a very short period of time. On the other hand, there are devices, for example, the heterojunction bipolar transistor which was invented here and was commercialized here. So it took a long time to be commercialized. 1906, the vacuum tube or trio was invented by Lee de Forest. And this is the view graph of the, the vacuum tube. Then year 1926, the idea of the MESFET. It was presented by Lee Linfield and it was granted in January 28, 1930. The patent was entitled Methods and Apparatus for Controlling Electrical Current. And this was the idea of the MESFET. So you have a semiconductor, you have a contact here, you have a contact here, and you have here the gate. It was essentially a MESFET, what Lilinfield presented in 1926. 1928, the idea of the division MOSFET. It was presented also by Lilinfield. The patent was entitled device for controlling electrical current. It was uh, requested in March 28, 1928, and it was granted in March 7, 1933. The, the device was this one. It was a semiconductor. No, but sorry, semiconductor. It, it was here. Then it has oxide here. It has a contact here, which is source. Here it had a contact, which is drain. And here is a contact, which is the gate. So it was essentially an on-top depletion mm -hmm. single bottom gate SOI MOSFET. 
Here is the reference, the pattern. 1935, the idea of the inversion MOSFET. It was presented by Oscar Hill, and it was essentially an on top inversion single top KSY MOSFET. Here is a reference. Here, 1947, the first transistor is fabricated by Bardin and Bratain. The transistor is described here, it's a semiconductor, a contact here, and a contact here. This is a meter, this is collector. And here is the contact to the base. It was called base because it was the physical base of the device. And uh, Bardin and Bratain were trying to fabricate a MOSFET. And in fact, Bratain wrote many years later. Bardin and I were simply trying to make a good field effect device. And as a result, we were put in a position to observe for the first time a phenomenon now called the transistor effect. Here are the references. So it's very interesting that they didn't have any idea of how it was working. In fact, this device, the point contact transistor, has two possible explanations. And nowadays, we really don't know which is the correct explanation. Nevertheless, this device was fabricated for very, a, a very short period of time. And this device, few, a, a few months later, allowed William Shockley in 1948 to present the idea of the bipolar Johnson transistor. Bardeen, Bratain, and Chokli received the Nobel Prize in 1956. Chokli wrote many years later, what I say about myself, and I am sure most creative people will say the same thing, is that when we look at how long it took us to get certain ideas, we are impressed with how dumb we were on how long it took us and how stupid we were. But we have learned to live with this stupidity and to find from it what relationship we should have seen in the first place. So I like very much this sentence because this sentence uh, gives you the, the hope that you will solve a problem when you are trying to solve a problem and the problem is difficult, especially for the graduate student. So, well, remember, if Chokli used to think like that, well, you, you should keep working and, you know, uh, don't, don't get frustrated. According to Riordan, Riordan is a, a, an expert in, in the evolution of the transistor, and he writes in IEEE spectrum, and here are the reference. So according to Riordan, the most important invention of the 20th century was conceived not just one, but twice. So in Paris, two German physicists, Herbert Matare and Henry Welker, built a point contact transistor in June 1948. So that's a few months after Bardin and Bratain. Then 1958, the hybrid integrated circuit. It was presented by Jack Kilby. So this is the hybrid integrated circuit. It was not really a, a complete integrated circuit as is known today, but it was very close to be an integrated circuit. And Jack Kilby received the Nobel Prize in physics in year 2000 for, his, for this contribution. He was working at Texas Instrument. 1959, the planar integrated circuit. This is a real integrated circuit. It was done by Robert Noyes from Fairchild. And uh, I think he will have probably received a Nobel Prize, but he died on June 3, 1990. 1960, the fabrication of the MOSFET. Here is the reference. Ken, Khan and Ataya. Here is Daun Khan and here is Martin Ataya. And this was the first MOSFET fabricated in 1960. The MOSFET was fabricated in 1960, even though it was invented by Lee Linfield in the, in the year 1928, but it took a long period of time to be fabricated because the problem was uh, that there was not a good oxide. So because of the, the oxide quality was not good, they could not fabricate a MOSFET. 1963, the invention of the CMOS circuit. So here is, for example, an inverter using CMOS. And as you know, the importance of this circuit is when one device is working, the other device is off and it is supposed to have zero current and this allowed the, the evolution of the, the digital circuit and it was invented in 1963 by Frank Wallace and City Sap. Here are the references. It was a, a, a journal and it was also a, a patent. 1971, the first microprocessor, the 4004. 
It, this circuit has 2.3 10 to a 3 transistor. It has an area of 12 nanometer, 12 millimeter square. The frequency was 108 kilohertz. It used a technology of 10, 10 micron. It used PMOS, 12 volt. It, it, the energy was 0 0.3 watts and it worked with four bits. And here is the reference. It is interesting to mention that the first microprocessor was really a, a, a pet project in Intel uh, and it was a, a design by the Japanese that Intel was doing for them. And the, the first microprocessor took a, a, a period, took a long time to be commercialized because this circuit used to belong to the Japanese company that fabricate calculators and the Japanese company allowed Intel to sell the, the, the microprocessor, uh, I guess about one year later. Morse law in 1965. This is the original plot by Morse. And the original plot of Morse by, by Morse has only five points. Here we have the, in the, the number of devices in an integrated circuit in a logarithmic scale. Here we have the year and Morse has only five, five points. And with these five points, he was able to predict that this behavior was going to be maintained for several years. The original article was presented in, in Electronics in April 1965, and there are reprinted versions in Proceeding of IEEE in January 1998, and in IEEE Solid State Circuit Society newsletter in year 2006. The interest in Morse law has increased abruptly in the 90s. This plot was done on February 24, year 2023. And here we have the document citation. We have in blue the scholar Google citation when you look for Morse law. And in red, you have a Scopus when you look for Morse law. And you see that in the 70s and 80s, there are a few citations. But then in the 90s, the citation start to increase abruptly. And then year 2020 is kind of getting flat. Here is what Moore's law, what Moore said about his law in 1975. The exponential increase in device per sheet is maintained by three distinct factors. Increase in silicon die size, reduction in future size, and device and circuit cleverness. And he presented here the number of components per chip and the year, and he see also the exponential behavior. And here is the reference. That was presented in IDN in 1975. Here is Morse law in year 2003. This was presented in IEEE International Solid State Circuit Conference in year 2003 by Morse. And Morse presented here the transistor density and here the year, and here there are the different circuits, and he sees that the behavior, exponential behavior is maintained. He says something very interesting. No exponential is forever, but forever can be delayed. Here is Morse law in year 2003. Here is the minimum feature size in the vertical axis, and here is the year, and here he compare the different sizes with another and other, and other things. For example, 10, the 100 micron is a human hair, and amoeba is 15 micron. Red ball cell is 7 micron, so it's around the year 80s. The 8 virus is 0 0.1 micron, which is year 2005, and it is increasing. Here we have the power, the power as a function of year. So we have here the active power, the active power is the power that you that you spend when the devices are commuting from off and on. And then you have here in green the leakage current. The leakage current is due to a current in the gate, and it's the leakage current, and this power is increasing. So, for example, in the year 80s, the leakage current was completely negligible. But in year 2000, the leakage current is approaching the active power. So the leakage current is not negligible anymore. So therefore, when you look at, analyze a CMOS inverter from today, the CMOS inverter has a power, even though it's not commuting because of the leakage power. 
Here is the power supply voltage, how it's changing. In the 70s, it was 12 volt, then it decreased below 10 volt, and they keep decreasing. And nowadays, it's less than one volt. And here is the lithography cost. The lithography cost is very interesting because if you plot here gears and here you cost, you, you in the vertical axis, the lithography tool cost, this is increasing exponentially. Here is more slow in year 2005. This plot was done by our group, and here is a transistor per die. Here are the different microprocessors. Here is the horizontal axis the year. And if you do the fitting, the fitting, the fitting will give you the number of transistors per die is following the, the following equation. Two to a power year, 9050 uh, divided by 194. Let me see because I was no okay it's fine let's keep the presentation yes because I, I was listening some noise so I was not I worried about I was receiving a message let's go back here okay so here we have more slow in year 2016 more low in, to year 2016 is a low by the exponential behavior. And here we have Hiroshi Y. Hiroshi Y, who is the EDS eminent lecturer, he's the only one EDS eminent lecturer, has recently presented various invited articles and talk about this topic. So here are the reference, and it's very interesting to mention that the last article, it is available in YouTube, and you can watch it in YouTube. According to Hiroshi Y in year 2021, if we plot from the stone age, the stone age, the device dimension were in the size of a centimeter. And it, this device size was maintained to a, to a 20th century. In the 20th century, the device size started to decrease abruptly. It goes below one micron and it's now reaching the a limit, the, the practical limit. The practical limit is around 10 nanometer. And this practical limit is larger than the tunneling distance, which is another fundamental physical limit, or the atomic distance, which is also another fundamental dimension limit. Here is the reference. According to Hiroshi Y, in April year 2022, here is the reference. This presentation was done in Malaysia. It's available in YouTube. Here with a picture of Hiroshi Y when he was giving the presentation. He was asking himself, what is the limit of downsizing? He started by saying, well, no picoelectronic will exist because there is no physical structure that will allow that. So the ultimate limit, the distance between atoms, we cannot reach that limit. The fundamental limit, direct tunnel distance, we cannot reach that limit. So the practical limit is going to be around 10 nanometers. And why is the practical limit? Well, because maybe there will be the merit by downsizing. The merit by downsizing means if you decrease below that, the prices, the cost will increase so high that it will be, there will not be, there will, it is not a good idea because you cannot sell it. So therefore, you cannot decrease any more than 10 microns because it will be too expensive. According to Hiroshi Y in April year 2022, the practical limit is due to heat generation, leakage current, and metal line resistance increase in reliability degradation. The following item seems to be not very important. Lithography resolution, cost increase, production yield, and dioxide reliability. Here is the reference. According to EY, downsizing will reach the limit in 10 years because of leakage current and metal line resistance increase and reliability degradation. 3D integration will keep more slow in the near future. However, 3D integration will reach the limit because of cost and heat generation. Here we have a presentation by Giorgio Baccarani. Giorgio Baccarani is a, an expert in MOSFET, and here is the reference. So Giorgio Baccarani reviewed the transistor discovery and the microelectronics evolution 
that was done recently in February of this year. And here is the, an interesting view graph, the minimum future size versus technology node. So here we have the minimum future size and here we have the different technology node. For example, the 130 technology node has a minimum feature size of 130. And this was the same at the beginning. It seems Adelmo had a technical issue. Let's, with his connection, maybe let's wait to see if he can uh, uh, establish the connection. So, but it is very important to mention that there is no information from Intel about this. So if you try to study more slow with a recent microprocessor, there is no way that you can do it. Mark Wolf, the director of processor architecture and integration in Intel, he wrote in year 2018, despite occasional report of its demise, Moore's law is alive and well. We have continually invented new material and new devices and structure to deliver the expected benefit of scaling and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Here is the reference. And Suman Data from University of Notre Dame clarify the confusing meaning of the technology node. The technology node used to be the gate length. Later, it represented half the minimum center-to-center -center distance, also known as speech, between the metal line in the first interconnect layer. Nowadays, the technology node has become merely an identifier more associated with the critical transistor density and transistor performance than anything else. More slow in year 2020. We, see, we have here in, in blue, the number of transistors is following more slow. And here we have the performance in yellow. But we start to see that the performance start to bend down. So the performance is not following more slow. Here we have an interesting view graph by Jack Su, who is the director of High Silicon Research. And that was presented in the conference EDTM year 2021. He presented the wave of computer revolution. So he started with here with mainframe computing. That was in the year 60s, it start to increase, go to, a, go to a maximum, and then start to decrease. And then the second wave, personal computing, start to increase in the year 1080s, it go to a maximum in the year 2005, more or less, and then it goes down. And then mobile computing, start to increase, go to a maximum, and then Get, get flat and then the last wave is going to be ubiquitous computing it start it started to increase now and it's increasing and this is ubiquitous computing is due to mobile computing automotive and for example internet of things so according to jexu semiconductor industry is poised to grow strongly for the next two decades here is a reference and jexu also said the following here we have the traditional trend of more slow. So here we have, for example, the dollar per transistor. The dollar per transistor is decreasing as a function of year. On the other hand, transistor per chip, which is yellow, is increasing as a function of year. So this is the traditional trend of more slow. But he said the following. Per gate cost reverse the trend starting from five nanometer node. Therefore, the scaling benefits are diminishing. So for example, 16 nanometer is here. So we have a cost. 10 nanometer, we have a cost here. And from 60 to 10 to seven is decreasing. But from seven to five nanometer is now increasing. And three nanometer is going to increase anymore. So that means the, the, cost, per, the, the cost per gate is increasing in the very small node. So after more, slow power the semiconductor industry for the past 55 years, the industry is poised to grow strongly for the next two decades, driven by ubiquitous computing. 
Here we, we have a biograph from Haiyun Sao. He is the CEO of SMIC. SMIC is one of the most important electronic company in China. And he said the following, he said the following, that was in the conference EDTM year 2021. Here is the reference. So according to him, he presented this view graph and this view graph described the evolution. For example, when you start to use high K metal, when you use the FinFET, and according to him, for example, the three nanometer is under research. Well, we have to update this view graph. Samsung began using three nanometer in production in June of year 2022 and TSMC initiated production on three nanometer in January of this year. According to Chemin Yu, IC industry is going to survive another 100 years. Here we have an interesting circuit, which is called wafer scale engine. Here is the picture. And here, this is the area compared to the area of a, a largest microprocessor. And this wafer scale engine has 8.5, 10 to the 5 cores. It has an area of 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter. It is fabricated by TSMC using seven nanometer process. It has 40 gigabyte of RAM and 16 times 10 to the 16 bit per second of memory bandwidth. Here are the reference. Here we have Morse law in year 2021. Uh, Morse law, according to this transistor count, is increasing and the chip size is increasing here. And the transistor density, look now, density is still increasing, but now they are not plotting anymore the transistor count. They are plotting here the transistor density. Here is Denner's scaling rule that was presented in 1974. According to Denner's rule, the idea was the dimension was scaled by a factor of 1 over k, doping was scaled by a factor of k, voltage was scaled by a factor of 1 over k, current scaled by a factor of 1 over k, and so on. Here is the traditional uh, MOSFET. Here are the references. Year 1920 to year 2000, miniaturization deviate from Denner scaling rule. So for here, for example, we have the switching energy. The switching energy is decreasing with years, but then around year 2000, it start to deviate from this straight line and start to go like this. And here we have the voltage that the circuit are using. So for example, the 40 nanometer, 45 nanometer technology is using around 1.1 volt, while a 40 nanometer technology is using less than one volt. Here we have the recent innovation used to continue scaling. We have six generation of Intel transistor. We have for here, for example, a strain silicon. It was used in year 2003. Then year 2065, 65 nanometer. Then in the 45 nanometer, the high K metal is to be, start to be used. And in the 22 nanometer, the FinFET was used. A strange silicon transistor is used commercially in year 2022. Uh, the history of a strange silicon is the following. In 1951, Bell Laboratories discovered that the stress influenced the mobility in diodes. In 1992, Welser from Stanford fabricated MOSFET with a strain with a stress silicon, which presents 70% higher mobility. In year 2002, Intel used a strain silicon transistor in the 19 nanometer technology. There is a book and a review article dedicated to a strain silicon MOSFET. Year 2007. High K metal gate transistor. The first MOSFET in the 60s were fabricated using metal gate. In 1968, Bell Laboratories proposed to use polysilicon gate in order to obtain a cell aligned process. This became the standard process up to year 2007. In 1998, simulation of high K metal gate transistor were presented in order to eliminate the poly gate depletion effect and to reduce tunnel leakage current between the gate and substrate. This, was, this work was done by Hewlett Packard Laboratories in collaboration with universities in California. In year 2005, Mishra et al. predicted that high-K electric material would be 
part of a mainstream technology. They recently reviewed the high cadi electric development. In year 2007, Intel used high cadi metal gate transistor in a 45 nanometer technology. Here is the abstract that when they presented this news. This news was presented in IEEE spectrum. Why do we need new transistor structure? This is a good question. I recommend you to see this presentation by Su Yae Kim Liu, FinFET History of Fundamental and Future, that was in the Symposium of PLSI Technology Short Course in year 2012. But here is the link, and you can download the presentation. So, leakage current occurs in the silicon away from the channel. The body of the SOI silicon on insulator SOI MOSFET is very thin. Therefore, the leakage is smaller in SOI devices. Here we have the regular device. So this is very thick. On the other hand, here we have an SOI MOSFET. Here we have an oxide. The silicon is just here. So this is very thin. So because of that, the leakage is smaller. Here we have an SOI. We will talk about the SOI silicon on insulator. It is interesting to mention that the original motivation for SOI in the 80s were the following. Suppression of flash up, greater immunity to radiation, and the possibility of three-dimensional integration. Here are some references. Research on SOI MOSFET started in the 80s with the fabrication of laser recrystallized polysilicon SOI MOSFET at Texas Instrument. The double gay SOI MOSFET was proposed in 1984, and it was fabricated in 1989 by Hitachi. This device contains the essence of the FinFET. Single crystal fully depleted SOI MOSFET were fabricated in 1987 since the Hewlett Packard. Here are the references. In 1998, the first FinFET was fabricated by Itachi in collaboration with the University of California, Berkeley. In 1999, the IBM selected SOI for next generation microprocessor. <clears throat> it is interesting that Texas Instrument start the, initiated the research in SOI, but it was IBM who took the SOI to, to the commercial level. In year 2003, Infineon developed a nanoscale FinFET for low power application. In year 2005, IBM, Sony, Toshiba developed a 64 cell processor in 90 nanometer SOI technology. In year 2012, Intel used fully depleted FinFET in the, in, in the 22 nanometer technology with high K metal gate and channel strain technique. Here we have the multi-gate three-dimensional SOI device. This is a single gate SOI MOSFET. In green is the gate, in white is the oxide, and in blue is the silicon. We have here source, we have here drain. The device is on top of an oxide. That's the reason it's called silicon on insulator. And the gate is here, and it's only a single gate. We have, here we have a planar double gate SOI MOSFET. So we have a gate here and a gate here. We have the silicon here, this is source, this is drain, and this is oxide, and this is oxide, a gay on top, and a gay on bottom. Here we have the vertical double gay SOI MOSFET. So we have here source, we have here drain, we have here oxide, we have here oxide, we have here a gay here in this, in this side, and a gay in the other side. So we have here the triple gay SOI MOSFET. The gays, all of this, this is oxide, this is source, this is drain. And the, all of this is on top of an oxide. Here we have the gay all around SOI MOSFET. So the gay is going all around. Here is source, here is drain, and this is oxide. And this is on top of an oxide. The gay all around MOSFET inspired the nano wire device. Here is the gay all around MOSFET. Here is source, here is drain, this is oxide. And the idea is if you take this structure and you copy this structure here, and then you put another structure like that one on top of it and another one. So this is called the nano wire. So the nano wire is like the gay all around, one on top of the other. Here is the reference. The double gate MOSFET structure could be planar, for example, planar because this is drain, this is source, 
and the current is going like this, the top gate is here, and there is a bottom gate here. So this is a double gate, but it's a planar structure. Could be vertical. Vertical means drain here, source here, the current is going like this, we have here a gate, and we have here another gate. Or could be tip of theme. Theme means source here, drain here, current is going like this, there is a gate here, and there is a bottom gate in the other side. Here is the, the reference. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my mouse is missing. Let me see. Oh, okay. I, I found my, 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 my mouse. Okay. The Delta SY MOSFET. The Delta SY MOSFET was proposed by Hisamoto from Hitachi in 1989. It is a double gain MOSFET and it contains MOSFET. 1998, the first FinFET was fabricated by Hitachi in collaboration with UC Berkeley. Here is the reference. Year 2012, Intel used fully depleted FinFET, and that was in the 22 nanometer technology with high K metal gate. Here we see a transmission electron microscope of a FinFET. Here is an interesting view graph. The interesting view graph is the following. In year 2012 to 2002, the number of players with the leading edge logic fabrication technology were 25. In year 2004, that there were only 18, 18 players. In year 2006, there were only 13 players. And if we go to year 2014, there were only four players. The four players were Global Foundry, Samsung, TSMC, and Intel. Dating previous spot, in year 16, we have four players, Intel, Global Foundry, TSMC, and Samsung. In year 2019, there were only two players working with the five nanometer node, TSMC and Samsung. In June 2022, Samsung began chip production using 3 nanometer process technology with Gale Orano architecture. TSMC started 3 nanometer chip production in January of this year. Here we have a view graph from the International Roadmap for Devices and Systems. In this, in this device, we have in the vertical axis the dimension scaling, and in the horizontal axis, we have the year. So we have the dimension scaling, how it's being reduced. And it's very interesting to know that the smallest dimension is always greater than 10 nanometer. So 10 nanometer is the practical limit. Here we have another view graph from the International Roadmap for Devices. So we have in the first one on top, the number of K, the, the, the number of K per area. And we see that this is increasing. We see that the megabit per area, the density of megabit per area is increasing. We have the number of core in the microprocessor is increasing. Here we have a view graph from the International Roadmap for Devices, and here is presenting the scaling scenario. The scaling scenario is the following. We started with planar devices. Uh, among the planar we have devices, we have the pool device, the classical pool device, the partially depleted SOI devices, which is still planar, or the fully depleted SOI device, which is still planar. But then we have non-planar devices, like the FinFET, like the bull FinFET, like the SOI FinFET, and the gay all around. The gay all around could be done vertically or could be done also lateral, and could be, uh, could be done in, in lateral in two ways. Uh, it could be SOI or could be a device with a connection to the body. It is very interesting is the nano chip. And the nano chip inspired uh, inspire the nano wire and the nano wire inspired the nano chip. The difference between the nano chip and the, the nano wire is that the lateral dimension is larger than the vertical dimension in the nano chip device. 
Now let's talk about the recent development and critical challenges. The, uh, in June 2022, Samsung began chip production using 3 nanometer process technology with a gay all around architecture. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing started chip this year. In 2019, and Samsung presented 5 nanometer manufacturing process. The 5 nanometer node was the first to be built completely using extreme ultraviolet lithography. There are only two companies using 3 nanometer technology. Global Foundry stopped at 14 nanometer. Intel is using 7 nanometer technology so far. Global Foundry, CA, Leti, and SOI Tech, and ST Microelectronics announced a new collaboration in fully repeated SOI technology on April of last year. Fully repeated SOI is used for automotive, Internet of Things, and mobile applications. Global Foundry and ST Microelectronics announced in July of last year that they are building a joint operating manufacturing plant facility in France. This new facility will support several technologies, in particular fully depleted SOI based technology. In year 2090, Majinowski from Global Foundry predicted that FinFET technology will be dominant until year 2021. He was right. This decade of FinFET will be finished because of technology challenges. He is right. In addition to the enormous cost of manufacturing and technology development, the IC design costs are also increasing with the new node. For example, the 28 nanometer, it costs 50 million dollars. Seven nanometer, it costs 300 million. And the five nanometer node costs 500 million. After year 2025, classical CMOS technology and more slow will end. Well, we will see it. Graphene or carbon nanotube are not planning in CMOS mainstream manufacturing in the near future. I agree with him. The gay all around of FinFET, what is the device that is going to be the device of the future or the present? Well, Samsung presented a three nanometer gay all around in year 2021 and began chip production in June of last year. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing plan to stay with FinFET for the 3 nanometer node. Intel is researching in the gable around transistor and they are using the name of ribbon fed. IBM is also working with the gable around transistor. Samsung began chip production using 3 nanometer process technology with gable around architecture in June of last year. This is a picture when they announced it. Samsung announced in year 2090 that the gale around will be used for the three nanometer node. And here they presented the evolution from planar fed to fin fed, and then the gale around, and then the nano sheet. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is using the five nanometer process technology, which entered in production in year 2020. The three nanometer technology entered in production of December last year. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, Arizona First Fabrication Lab, is scheduled to begin production of fine nanometer process technology in year 2024. And Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company has also started the construction of a second fabrication, which is scheduled to begin production of three nanometer process technology by the year 2026. The investment will be US $40 billion representing the largest foreign direct investment in Arizona history. Here we have an interesting idea presented by Intel in year 2020 in IDN. The idea is on the left side, you have a planner device. This is a conventional device. Then you, you go to the FinFET. The FinFET, it was a good, uh, a good advance, uh, a good advance. Then you go to the nano ribbon, and the nano ribbon you have a, a P channel and an E channel one next to the other. The idea is to, walk, to go one step forward. Now, instead of having one device next to the other, we have one device on, one on top of the other. So we have the N channel on top of the P channel. In that way, we are saving area. 
This is a view graph presented by Synopsis in IDM year 2020. He said scaling began slowing after the 10 nanometer node and is expected to practically finish by the one nanometer node. Transist transistor density is expected to continue increases at 20% per year due to design technology co-optimization and electronic design automation. And here on the left side, we have a view graph where he present for the, for example, the technology node in the horizontal axis, the contribution in the vertical axis. So for example, for the 100 nanometer node, the contribution of scaling was 80%, while the contribution of the software, EDA and DTCDO, is about 20%. On the other hand, if we go to the right to a figure, the projection for the one nanometer node on the figure in the right side, for the one nanometer node, the contribution of scaling is going to be less than 10% for the one nanometer node, and the contribution to DTCO and EDA will be larger than 90%. Now we have a, a view graph presented by I, a TSMC and IDM last year, last December, in IDM. They reported MFET with EOT of one nanometer, one nanometer and narrowly ideas to threshold swing of 68 millivolt per decade. It is interesting that they extract the threshold voltage using the constant current method. And here is, we have a, a, a summary of what Ann Keller, Ann Keller is the Intel Executive Vice President, and she presented this in IDM last year, last December, and she said the following, more slow predicting functional integration increase over time continue to be built upon a foundation of semiconductor process scaling. Moving the power line to the backside of the wafer, a technique called power via, enable more cell high and performance scaling than the simple geometric screen. The next major architect of transistor scaling called ribbon fed or all gay all around. Advanced package will play an increasing larger role in enable power performance area cost time to market design flexibility and reliability. Power, thermal and routing constraints are bottleneck to three-dimensional IC scaling. The industry may revisit three compound semiconductor for NMOS and their than silicon and thus be capable of more efficient circuit performance. Now let's talk about RF application. The wireless market was traditionally dominated by bipolar Johnson transistor and MOSFET. Because of the downscaling of CMOS, the MOSFET is now used for low gigahertz range application. University of California, Los Angeles, presented the first bull CMOS RF amplifier in year 1993. This is very interesting because I went to graduate school before that, and I used to remember that, you know, the RA application was not for CMOS, and nowadays CMOS is getting to be dominant in the RA application. Samsung used 14 nanometer FinFET in RF application. TSMC used 5 nanometer FinFET in RA application, and the references are there. Uh, here we have uh, some view graph presented by Raskin, and that Raskin presented this view graph in La, La ADC in April year 2021. According to him, completed the SOI MOSFET with channel length of 90 nanometer to 160 nanometer is the main street technology for RF SOI system. And fully depleted the SOI MOSFET is the most promising candidate for future wireless communication. Conclusion. We have reviewed the evolution of semiconductor device. Moore's law is approaching the end and it is partially surviving because of device and circuit cleverness. FinFET are the dominant devices in CMOS technology for high speed use in microprocessor and wireless application. The FinFET are being replaced by the nano chip, which is also called gay all around, nano beam, nano ribbon, ribbon FET, or multi bridge channel FET. FINDA presenta sound. Es una honra, es un placer visitar el Brasil. Yo realmente agradezco este convite. 
Será un placer enviarle una copia de mi presentación si vos se solicita por email. Mi, mi, mi email es ortice.org. Gracias. Thank you. Obrigado. Gracias. Obrigado, Adel, for your great presentation. Thank you uh, really very, very much. And the audience that is uh, watching over YouTube, you can type your questions on the YouTube chat and we are going to read it uh, to Adelmo. Uh, there are still, uh, is there still a question? There is from Diogenes Marcano from uh, Simon Bolivar University. And Diogenes Marcano asked Adelmo, thank you for this conference. According to your experience, what is the limit in semiconductor technology? Can artificial intelligence be applied to these technologies? Uh, let, let me let, let me get rid of first. I am fighting with the computer. Okay, uh, please take your time, Adele. Take your time, please. Yes. Uh, okay. So I, I should uh, stop screen, no? Or, or uh, yes, I already stop. You you can you already stop sharing the screen, but don't leave the oh. don't leave the studio. If you leave the studio, will will be okay. We'll, no, no, no problem. We'll okay. Disconnected. Okay. But, uh, okay, perfect. Yes, you're, so, so, you're... so the question, if I understood, is uh, are we go, uh, is the artificial intelligence going to be applied to a semiconductor development? Is that that yes. is the question, isn't it? Well, yes, definitely it will be. This is why synopsis is present is saying, and le, le, maybe let me let me go back to I, I still can I show the presentation? And let, let's see. No. Okay, present. Let's, let's go back to uh, share a screen. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. Entire screen. Okay. Uh, are you, so are you watching my, my screen now, no? Uh, my not screen? yet, but I think it's... Not yet. Yes, now, yes, yes, now we see your screen. Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay, there is a view graph that is a good answer to that question. Let me show it to you. That's the reason I wanted. You know, see, this view graph, for example, uh, let's go, let's look at the right side of the view graph. Let me see. If you see this here, we have here the technology node, and here we have the contribution. So if we look at 100 node, that means an, an old node, the contribution of pitch scaling, that means uh, 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 downsizing is 80%. And this is a contribution of the software in which artificial intelligence will play an important role. The, the software is what they call a design technology co-optimization and electronic design automation. That has to be with this has to do with software and in artificial intelligence, of course. So by, by this note, the contribution is only 20%. But what they are projecting or what they are expecting is for the one nanometer node, scaling will contribute to less than 10%, while the software and the artificial intelligence will contribute to 90%. So definitely the answer is yes, it will be a it will be very important. Yeah, software and tools like artificial intelligence are becoming even more important. Is that what you mean, right? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, thank you, Adelmo. There is another question. The next, next question is from Juan ba Pablo Martinez Brito. Can you clarify more on the distance of three, two, and one nanometer in current technologies? This just refers to what currently? I know that's no longer referred to the channel length. I mean, the feature size is probably is ask, uh, he's asking what the feature size mean today. You know, you have that slides where you show uh, the technology node and the feature size. The, I will okay. read the question. Okay. Yeah, let, let's go back to that one. Yeah. So he wants you to comment more and clarify that. What does the distance or the names three, two, one nanometer actually mean? since this does not mean the channel length anymore. Okay, here is what Suman Data said. And uh, the, the problem was, uh, well, uh, 
if we go, for example, to the 90s or to the 80s, uh, when you said in the 80s, the technology was 10 micron, that means 10 micron was the channel length. And that was very simple. If you know it's a 10 micron technology, it was 10 micro channel length. The problem was in, in the recent development, the downsizing is not anymore with the channel length. The downsizing has to do with something around the channel length. What that means is the device has a channel, of course, and the device has some other part. You, you, you expand some area, for example, to contact source, to contact train. So the idea is they are increasing the density of the devices, not because they are reducing the channel length. The, the channel length is not being reduced anymore. It cannot be reduced anymore. It reached a limit, I think. The problem is what they are doing is they are reducing the sizes, for example, of the contact of source and drain and they, all the, 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 the sizes between one metal line and another metal line. And by doing that, they are increasing the density. So then what they do is in the, in the latest technology node, the technology node doesn't mean the channel length anymore. No, not at all. The technology node has to do with the density. So when they tell you the, the technology node is three nanometer, for sure the device has a channel length larger than 10 nanometers, for sure. And the idea is they have reduced so much the, the, the other areas that it is like having an effective channel length of three nanometers. But it's not that the channel length is three nanometers. No, no way. Definitely no. I don't know if I answer the question. Maybe I, I let's see if I, uh, here is a plot of Pacarani also. Uh, this plot, uh, it was presented by Pacarani, but actually it was presented originally here by Sicar and Truman introduction. And the idea is in three nanometer node, the, the, the dimension is a lot larger than 10 nanometer. And it will be like that in the near future. Uh, I don't know if I answered the question or why I'm missing something. I, I think so. I think you answered the question. And uh, Juan said, I'm a huge fan. Uh, Juan, not Pablo Martinez Brito, the one that asked the question, said, I'm a huge fan of your work, Professor Adelmo. Ah, thank you. Uh, it's good to know that, that, that your work is being used somewhere because sometimes you get frustrated. So very nice. But thank you very much. Obrigado. And there is a, one question by Enrique Kessler. Once the 3D scaling is explored, is the single core performance doomed until a new material is fall, found? What are you believe? I will read, read again. Once the 3G scale scaling is explored, is the single core performance doomed until a new material is found? What are your beliefs? Well, I think the the 3D the 3D integration uh, is very interesting because uh, that was the original motivation in the 80s when I was starting my graduate work at the University of Florida. That was a dream, you know, SOI to be used for three-dimensional integration. Nowadays, it's not a dream anymore. It's a real, it's a, it's a real situation. The 3D integration is being used. And the problem with the 3D integration is that you will be able to keep increasing the density of devices, but the problem will be the heat. The, the heat will limit the integration. And with respect to using one core, well, I, I I am a little, I am not an expert in digital, but I, I, my guess is the following, no? Uh, nowadays, uh, they, they are using, the, the idea of using a single core is, is, is over. They are using multiple core, and the idea of using multiple core, well, now if they use a three-dimensional SOI integration, it's just a matter of technology. Probably they, are, they will use it. They will be using in the near future, or probably they are already using. I don't know the answer. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I, if I answer the question or I am missing yes, something. Yes, I, I, I think so. Yes, I think so, Adelmo. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. There are no more questions there, and also we have over the time because usually the talk with question and answer expected to be one hour. We are a little bit over already, so. Uh, Thank you very much, Adelmo. And I also would like to uh, 
Uh, yes, both Pablo and Enrique, they confirm the, the, the ones that ask the question that you answer the question. They thank you for, for the answer, Delmo. They, I'm reading the YouTube chat. And I also would like to thank uh, very much uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Sandro Binsel Ferreira from Unicinos. That's our chapter vice chair or co chair that's managing the streaming in the backstage. So, Sandro, thank you. Also, very much for your help here. Without you, this would not happen. And thank you again, Adelmo, for for your uh, great work, you know, and for sharing it uh, with you. I also like when I like your work very much. I read a lot of your papers, and yes, I like very much your work. I learned a very lot of from your work. So, thank you, thank you very much, Adelmo. It's always a pleasure. Obrigado, to, muito to obrigado. Have a talk with you. Yeah, yes, and muito obrigado, because now we're over the one hour time slot that we have for the... for the. Uh, and as uh, Adelmo said, you can always send him an email and uh, ask him questions and get in touch, right, Adelmo? If you could briefly sh show again for the closure your email, I think it's at the first or the last slide, so that we can close the section if there's no further questions. Okay. Okay. Here is a. Yeah, here's the email. Here's the email. You also, uh, yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adelmo. And thank you, everybody, for the audience. It was a great, great pleasure this uh, webinar uh, today. And Sandro, so if you can uh, stop the streaming, Sandro, we will thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sandro.